right, we're back for round nine of the Rocky franchise here on the franchise. You're jacked in. I'm your host, Daniel Ehrenberg, and I've got my good friend and co-host, Logan Biadere, over there. Ding, ding, ding. Fight! What is this? Is this Creed 3 or A Quiet Place 3? Do you say that because there's a deaf girl? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. They got to spin her off. Which one? Deaf Girl. I, here's what. Here's my plan is for the Creed series, all right? This is Creed 3. They introduce... I mean, did they have a deaf daughter previously? I don't think so. I don't think so either. So, she's a deaf daughter named Amara Can I ask another question Creed. before we go further? Uh, uh, how about let me finish my fucking sentence? But it was about... The previousness of the this, this franchise. All right, go ahead. And the deafness was it? Wasn't it set up that like in the first Creed movie that the that Bianca is her name that she starts losing her hearing? Isn't that set yeah. up? Yeah, yeah. So does she pass that on to her daughter? I believe so. That's how I took it to be. I didn't know that. That's really how that worked. To be honest. Mm sometimes you lose your hearing in an accident or something, but sometimes it's a thing, you know? I, I watched the show Switched at Birth, okay? And, uh... Oh, actually, the mom of the deaf girl wasn't deaf in that. Never mind. <laughs> All right? But that's a good show. Anyway, uh, here's my plan Sorry for to interrupt the, you. That's yeah. okay. Here's my plan for the Creed franchise. One more with, with, jo- with, uh, with our friend Michael. Michael B. He's going to do one more Creed, Creed 4. And then, Logan, he takes the Sylvester Stallone role. And he's an old man training deaf daughter. I feel like that's going to be Creed 4. No, I, I think I think they got to do one more just Creed movie. Why? And, He's already retired to start this movie, and he wins he's again the, at the end of this one. He's right. gonna then keep fighting. He's and this the one, champion. this one ends. He can't just retire as champion. Didn't isn't that what he did last time? Yeah, but it would be lame to do it again. He <laughs> should fight a couple more matches. We'll see it. You know, have it be Clubber Lang's son or something. Right, and I don't know who that is. Obviously, that's but, Mr. T from Rocky Three. But so. Doesn't this one end with him like with his daughter in the ring boxing and there's like there's like she leaves and it's like, oh, she's going to be the next Creed. I feel like this they're setting her up for the very next movie. I don't no. think they're going to wait for but Creed But she's a five. tiny child. Listen, you do Creed 4. Skip ahead 10 years. He can pull it off. You can skip ahead 10 years. She's still going to be a teenager. All right. Yeah. What is she here? Like eight? I don't know. What Seven she, or eight? What they've got to do, Logan... One more Creed, and she's in it, you know, a lot, and he's training her, but she's still, she's not the star of the movie. I think one more Creed, and then Deaf Girl the movie. Okay. Well, I hope that they magically make her talk by the next movie, because I it probably works at home, but when we have to go to the theater, and we have to, like, sit in quiet and read subtitles, and with other people around, and they're, like, eating and shit, that annoys me, to be honest. Well, I was like, re- 20 full seconds of silence. I don't like that. Didn't annoy me, because I was reading subtitles all the way, Logan. I went to see Creed 3 with subs on. I have no problem with subtitles. I have problems with the silence and everyone sitting in the silence together. I don't. There like was that. no silence in my theater. There's a group of about 17 teenagers that went to see it together. We actually had to move our fucking seats to get away from them. <laughs> it doesn't make it better, because they were talking. Well, I'm just saying, I never had uncomfortable silence. It wasn't like when I saw a fucking skin a rink uh, yeah <laughs> okay uh <laughs> this isn't the skin a rink pod no no he, right. daniel was asking me before he's like can we just do skin a rink instead i was like no we're not he asked me every before every episode we i have so much to say about it yeah he's yeah like, can we can we just we'll wait two hours you watch it we'll come back then we'll do skin a rink if there's ever a skin a rink sequel i really hope they bring back uh the corner of the bathroom what about the telephone? I know that's a character. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I hope they bring back... You know, if 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 they bring back any character from the first one, my favorite character was probably the public domain cartoons. Okay, all right. 
All right. All right. Let's get it to Creed 3. Uh, it had the biggest budget of any of these Creeds. All right. Okay. Which probably means it's the biggest budget of any of the Rockies, too. Really? This yeah. One did it? I'm pretty sure. Because the first Creed was, they had $40 million. I did some research. Doesn't he, like, climb mountains and shit, though? Mm, yeah. Yeah. One of the middle ones is probably one of the most expensive. I don't expensive. think so, man. I mean, maybe Balboa. But those early ones, like, we didn't spend that much money on movies in the 80s. Slash 70s. So. I think so. So, the first Creed, they had $40 million. And they had Sylvester Stallone to pay in that one. The second Creed, they had $50 million. Now, Logan, $75 million. All right? And I'm always surprised when these do well, but they all do well. People love this, this franchise. It's for, like, dads love them. They bring their kids. People that were, like, young then. And then the people that are young now love them. See, I didn't know people who are young it's now. Like Top love Gun, them. right? I kind of thought it was an old people franchise. Like, it's for nostalgia. Maybe, but, right. But I don't know. That's what I thought until I went to go see this thing in theaters and 17 teenagers were there. Oh, yeah, as you just said. Yeah. One of them had a T-shirt on that said, I heart hot moms. Wow. Yeah. You weren't there with your mom. Yeah, I know. And I was like, me and that kid are hanging hard, man. <laughs> like, I don't like the other 16, but me and him are cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So uh, Creed 3, let's get into it, Logan. It's directed by Michael B. Jordan. I'm already out. Come on. Listen, Michael B. Jordan is a handsome actor. Bradley Cooper is one of the most exciting filmmakers in Hollywood right no, now. No, he's not. In my opinion, yes, he is. <laughs> Why? Because he did a fucking star in sports? Yes, I'm so pumped for anything he does. All right. Well, listen to this. And Olivia I... Wilde? Come on. She's 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 great. terrible. <laughs> Elizabeth Banks, one of the worst directors we have. Who else? Affleck, obviously. Affleck's good, actually. Yeah. But I I'm convinced that most handsome people can't direct. Who's the hottest, like, actual director? Oh, that's a good question. Sarah Polly. Well, she was an actor too, though. Um yeah, I guess Greta Gerwig doesn't count either. Yeah, you're right. Uh who's an actor, a good actor? Peter no, Jackson. He's no, he looks like a hobbit. <laughs> Come on. He does. That's why he relates so much to those Lord of the Rings characters. Um, I don't know. It's got to be a, a lady, right? I feel like well, direct. I don't know. Damien Chazelle, he's good looking. Sure. But, uh, you know, I'm, I always have crushes on lady directors. Let like us Joe, know. The Josephine Decker, she's attractive. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. But, see, I am not convinced that attractive people are good artists. And I'm not convinced that actors can direct. I, I think there have been so few good ones. Like, they, for every 20 they try, one of them is talented. Clint. Yeah, that's one for sure. All right. But, uh, but Michael B., he didn't embarrass himself here, I don't think. No, yeah. I, honestly, I was pretty upset by your review. Your review went straight to like, this movie looked bad, and, and no, it didn't. It doesn't look bad. It just looks that should not have been your. Review. It looks noticeably worse than the I didn't first really think two. So. I thought I, he carried himself pretty well. Really, what what did you think of those um, parking lot of a convenience store th scenes? That was like one of the worst parts. Where they, for some reason, used a green screen. The they couldn't just go the to the both. They couldn't just go to the parking lot of a fucking convenience store. Okay, all right. Well, uh, to be honest, I didn't. I didn't really pick up on that. But I thought it was that was really out of place when he went during the daytime to go check it out to go scope out the scene of the crime. That was weird. yeah. That was weird. All right, listen. <laughs> but I don't think he embarrassed himself. It's, it's fine, fine movie. All right. He did a lot of good stuff. I thought. Like what? The fi I like the final fight when uh, 
when it's like a, everyone disappears in the crowd and it's just them mm. fighting each other and it's like poof, poof, poof. it's all anime influenced i liked it i thought it was kind of cool michael b jordan's one of these fucking nerds that's like super into like dragon ball z and shit you could totally see why are that you judging all... him so hard i don't really understand i love michael b jordan i've been a fan of his since he was a child in the wire all right anyway um so michael b he's our director and the uh the nepotism doesn't stop there logan because our screenplay is written by keenan coogler why is michael b jordan a nepotism thing well, because he's the actor from the series. That's, that's nepotism? That's how he got the director role. All right. Oh, I guess not. Whatever. Leave me alone, man. I was just asking. I feel I like was you're genuinely... harping on everything I say today. No, I was just curious about uh, if that's tr- that a form of nepotism. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's yeah, not Keenan like Coogley. Michael B. Jordan was getting other big directing jobs. He, you know, it was like... I'll do your third Creed movie if you let me direct. He's got a little power, you know? He's yeah. the Keys Creed, the we titular might... Creed. You think he'll direct again? I mean, I'm sure he will. Yeah, I, I know he will. But he's... like something else, like something like really like yeah. he's going to try to go for something? Yeah, but I also think he's going to direct Creed. Uh, probably creed for but uh, you know it's sort of cute that he's directing these now because sylvester stallone directed a few of those rockies yeah I, yeah i actually had the same exact thought that that it's a great point yeah yeah it's a little bit charming actually i agree 100 percent. all right uh i wouldn't be judging as hard if the first two weren't so good <laughs> like they're who directed the second one uh i don't remember i don't either you want me to look that up Sure. That one was pretty good, though. I'm not sure which one I like more, this one or that one. I don't really remember a lot. Of, oh, that one was actually, I was about to say I don't remember the villain, but the villain was Drago's kid, which is in this one. Creed 2 was directed by Stephen Capel Jr. He'd only done an indie before Creed 2, and uh, he was unavailable to do this movie because he's directing the new Transformers movie. Okay, I'm sure that'll be great. Uh, it might be. Who knows? I hope so. We might be covering it. Hint, hint. (laughs) All right. Uh, But it's not just... Okay, so they got a draft first from this fella, Zach Balin. And he's the guy that wrote King Richard, the movie that Will Smith won an Oscar for playing Venus and Serena Williams' dad. Yeah, so if if not for him, we would have never gotten that slap. We would have never gotten this latest Chris Rock uh, stand-up special. Selective outrage. We owe a lot to Zach Balin. We really do. He brought us a lot into the pop cultural conversation. And now here he is writing Creed He brought 3. us Diamond Dame. Yeah. It's, it's funny that they call him Dame because every time someone says Dame, I just think of like Judy Dench. Really? Yeah. I think of Damian Lillard. <laughs> do you know who that I, is? Uh, uh, yeah, I do. But I don't think of Dame as being primarily short for Damien. I think of it as being a title for a wonderful British actress. Yeah, I un- I understand. Dame Maggie Smith. I would have thought the same um, if, it, if it was like not within the last eight or ten years or whatever. Yeah, I guess it's been more of a thing now. Damien's calling himself Dame. And I'm like... Go fuck yourselves. You already have a cool name. Damien. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I we actually had the conversation with my brother once. We were like, who has the coolest NBA name? And we were like, maybe Damien Lillard. That's a pretty cool name. That's mad cool. Mad cool, right? Yeah. But a lot of that, a lot of them cool have cool names. You 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 know Ja Morant? That's a cool name. You know about Ja Morant? Yeah. Didn't he just wave a gun in a club? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know him from that. <laughs> Zion Williamson? Are you kidding me? That's cool. What's the coolest basketball name ever? Is it Hakeem Olajuwon? No, it's Steve Nash. <laughs> Steve Nash. Tim Duncan. <laughs> Come for the white guy over here. <laughs> no, I don't know. Shaquille what? O'Neal. De- How about Dikembe Mutombo? That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. All right. So Zach Balin, he's co-writing with Keenan Kugler. Ryan Coogler's uh, brother. And of course, Ryan Coogler directed the first one and he's producing the, all of them. 
And uh, Keenan Kugler, his only previous screenwriting credit was he was one of the six credited screenwriters on Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't honestly, know if he's the one that came up with the server verse, but he might be. Did you and Tim do that on the We Love Kids movies, the first movie? I know you guys didn't do the second one, but did you get, wait, did you do the second one? We might have done the second one. Did you do the first one? I don't think so. I, I think know. we just did the second one. But uh, that's we, crazy. We never did those, though. Those are still available to cover for the franchise main pod. All right. But if you want to hear me talk about Space Jam 2 and New Legacy, patreon.com. I'm not even sure it's the there, franchise. So don't, don't hold us to that. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Logan. Yes. The movie came out last weekend. It was a big hit. It's already made back its money. It'll go into the black this next weekend, I guess. What is that? Positive? Yeah. Why does it sound so scary if it's so good? I don't know. It's going into the red, right? When bad stuff happens. But I feel like it should be green. Oh, I like that. It should be. Going into the not. black. It's, it's going so into the black. I, you're very racist in this podcast. But what are you talking about? You Everything think Steve I say. Nash is the best basketball name. You think going into the black is a bad thing? It doesn't that just sound very. Is, if, so, if if you got on a boat and someone was like, "All right, we're going into the black," wouldn't you be very scared? Yeah, but if someone yeah, was like, "We're I, going into the green," you'd be like, "Oh, that's nice, <laughs> <laughs> right?" Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I guess, I guess so. That was fun. All right. <laughs> Logan, uh, so Creed 3 is about the son of <laughs> whatever. Apollo. Creed. Apollo Creed from Rocky 1, 2, and 3. His son. Well, you're spoiling it. What happens to him? Well, I'm spoiling it. It's a movie from 1985 or something. Yeah, he only makes it to the third one, though. Yeah, because he gets fucking killed by Clover Okay, Lang. okay, okay. Motherfucker. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I know. Um, So cr- that's why Rocky has to fight him. For his life? Avenge his friend. Yeah. He fights who? Clubber Lang, Mr. T. Because Clubber Lang killed him? Because Clubber Lang killed his friend, Apollo Creed. Wait, wait, wait. So... If there was a fighter right now mm-hmm. whose friend died, like in gang violence, it's not he... in gang violence. He died okay, in the ring. Whatever. Oh, he was a. Re- I was gonna. I thought he was just challenged somebody who shot his. No, friend no, no. He's like an exciting new boxer. Apollo Creed That's did crazy. not train properly. He had too much hubris, and Clubber Lang punched him to death. Right after was James it like the ref's Brown fault? Performed. Did the ref not know he was already passed out and he should have stopped it beforehand or something? Mm, I don't remember that. Wow, well, I, I gotta watch these films. What? Which one is that? Four? That's Five? three. That's three. Oh, that's three. I thought three was Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's just at the beginning. Oh, really? I heard like <laughs> I, my whole life. I heard like, oh, Hulk Hogan, big villain. Well, he is, but only for like the first half hour, and then the rest of the movie's Clubber Lang. Okay. All right. Right. Keep continue. I'm sorry. I will. So Apollo Creed, he has this son Adonis Creed. We've already followed him through two movies. All right. His mom, Felicia Rashad, she's in this one a lot. And I was like, weird to use Felicia Rashad so much, but then I realized it's because they're gonna kill her. Yeah, I didn't really like her that much. She like gives him she she gives him the photo to be like, Hey, this guy is bad and his friend Yeah. Uh his friend hurt the other guy. She's a snitch. Yeah, she is a snitch. And snitches she deserve get to die. St- yeah, yeah. So at Felicia Rashad, I think she uh, knew about the Cosby stuff. So I judge her. She was on that show. She was on. She played his wife on that show. She was there on set every day. You can't tell me she never mm. caught wind of this shit. Yeah, that's that's rough. Yeah. So when I see her and stuff, that's what I think about. But. You know, she's all right. She plays the mom. She has a death scene. It's very lovely. Oh, and during the death scene, she does that thing from of death scenes past where like she thinks she's talking to her son, but she's really talking to her grandson. Yeah. Right. When else does that happen? I, a lot. I've seen it happen a lot. Yeah, you're right. I was trying to put your, your feet to the fire. That happens all the time, though. Yeah. 
All right. No Stallone in this no movie. Stallone. It's the first Rocky franchise movie with zero Sylvester Stallone. They even barely even bomb. mention him. Not even a photo. That's a good point. The only time they mention him is like, I remember that time when Apollo gave that other underdog a shot? Why can't you do the same? That's like the only time they mention him, really. He mentions him one other time. I can't really remember what he said, but... Uh, but we don't know what he's up to. We don't know what he's up to. We have no idea. What the last we saw, he was going to visit his son, Milo Ventimiglia, and he could still be in that house as far as we know. Yeah, he could, have, he could be torturing Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why, what happened? Why couldn't they pay him? You said this was the most biggest budget they've ever had. I don't think they couldn't pay him. I think... Either Sylvester said no. He could have been busy with Tulsa King, the best show on TV. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, where he plays um, uh, Dwight, Dwight Man Freddy. Freddy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> 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 and uh, Or, you know, they could just not have had anything for him to do. Yeah, I guess so. You know, Keith Kugler is not that creative. They could have taken away one of Bianca's speeches and given it to Rocky. Because I, I went, I Googled, I looked up one of her lines because I remembered that it was so bad. That what I, was uh, it? Oh, I've got it here. Let me let me get it. All right. She says, it's like after everything and like before they decide for him to go fight him. All right. So, and, so Jonathan Majors is champ and he's sort of like teasing Creed. Yes. And it, Yes, and he doesn't know what to do. He's conflicted. What do I do? Do I battle him? You know. Yeah. Do, do I do I call up Stephen A? <laughs> what do I do at this po- at this moment? I couldn't believe Stephen A. Smith <laughs> in this movie. It's always so weird to me, and, and it happens in all three Creed movies, and I think Rocky Balboa too. Stephen where... A's in all of them? No, 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 not Stephen A. But like when they just cut to it, like a show. Like it's like Showtime yeah, presents boxing, and or yeah, or ESPN Sports Center, or like it's and and they like show the whole thing, like the the opening creds. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Um. But here's a line she she has. Okay, she says, "You have to try to forgive yourself, so that you can begin to believe that you deserve the life that you have earned." Yeah, Keenan wrote that one, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that didn't even make sense. It's hard to wrap your lips around that one. Tessa, the fact that I didn't even notice how bad that line is is a testament to Tessa Thompson's acting. No, she did bad. I just did even worse. Are you kidding me? Tessa's good. I yeah, like yeah, that. Maybe, I, but I, that, that line stuck with me so much I had to fucking Google it. All right. Well, so the plot of this movie, it starts with a, a nice little flashback. All right. Yeah. You've got young uh young Creed and young Diamond Dame. I thought and- young Michael B. Jordan looked like young Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, I thought they did a good job with that too. It it, it kind of reminded me of um young Mr. Echo on Lost, but you all know what that is. No. Um but anyway, they uh they're he's a boxer. Creed looks up to him. At this point, Creed doesn't know his father's Creed, right? Is that a thing in Creed? He finds out his dad's Creed? Yeah, I, I think so. Wow. I might be wrong I about that. that. Part of I Creed. might be wrong about that. So what, how does Creed start? What is he at the start of Creed? Just like a normal dude? Well, he's like a troubled kid, right? And then he finds out your dad was was Apollo, and he's like, oh, shit. I that's how I re- That's how I remember it, but I could be wrong about it. All right. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but he's loves boxing and diamond Dame. He's the champion of the junior division. Okay. And that, but then they go to a convenience store. It's actually, I like that. It's a convenience store that says liquor and check cashing. Mm, why do you like that so much that's realistic i've seen a lot of places like that yeah which proves that they shot this on location and not cgi no i think they did shoot it on location but then they replaced all the backgrounds what the hell is wrong with people i know i fucking movies have gotten to a place where they need to just fucking calm down 
Bring a fucking camera to a place and shoot a thing. Or maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're just. Crazy. I'm not fucking. Did you watch wrong this in about 3D? This. No, I watched it in 2D in a regular theater. It, it, it just had, uh, you know, subs on. By the way, does Scream Six come out this week? Yeah. We're gonna go watch that. I am. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go watch that in 3D. Aren't they showing that in 3D? I don't care. I don't see anything in 3D. The last thing I saw in 3D was Coraline. Like that was over 10 years ago. Mine was Avatar: The Way of Water. <laughs> oh yeah, because because <laughs> our friend Tim made you go see that in like a specific aspect ratio. <laughs> like it'll be best with this aspect it was just IMAX ratio 3D. and this frame rate and this amount of popping off the screen. And this amount of popcorn. Yeah, How, did you have? What'd you eat during Creed Three? Nothing. Nothing. I, I I don't ever get anything. My, you know, I have a tiny little bladder. If I get it something to eat, I want to drink something. And if I drink something, I have to go to the bathroom. Same, but I'm okay with that. I peed during Creed Three. Well, you have somebody to tell you what you missed, right? That's true. Yeah, my girl. I'm lonely. I, I missed the first half of the scene where uh, where he goes to confront Jonathan Majors. Oh, on the rooftop? Yeah, yeah. Dang. I missed some of that scene. scene. I, was, I was taking a piss. Wow. Wow, you missed it. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I ate, uh... I had uh, some Swedish fish. Okay. Yeah. But I was almost done with them, like, before the movie even started. I feel like <laughs> we saw, like, 40 minutes of trailers. Like, the trailers went on for fucking ever. I always show up 15 minutes late to movies so that I, I try and avoid the trailers. I like the trailers. I try to show up late enough so that, like, I don't see too much Maria Menounos. She still does that? Yeah, she still does new. She just did the challenge uh, reunion. Did she? Yeah, she just hosted it. Oh, man, maybe I should watch it. They they, uh, they didn't get uh, Justine Valentine this time around. That's sad. Mm. Or The Miz. Or The Miz. Yeah. Uh, the Miz is hosting WrestleMania this year. What do you mean, Hosting. You know, sometimes WrestleMania has a guy come out and, like, hype the crowd. I think one year it was Hulk Hogan. One year the New Day did it. I've never heard of this. Yeah, yeah. This year, The Miz. They have a host. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's All a right. good host. Well, yeah. and it's, Can't go wrong. It, it's in Hollywood, and, you know, that's his whole gimmick is he's Hollywood yeah. guy. Yeah, that's right. All right. Anyway. You think John, John Morrison will be there? No. He's not signed to the company anymore, but I know John Cena make will appearance? be there wrestling Austin Theory. Wait, right. who is John Cena? Yeah. Oh, I saw yeah, I saw him come out. My brother sent me a little clip of him coming yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're setting up a what lot. What a great theme song. Wow, wow, wow. Just like the opening though, it's like Oh yeah. That is so good. And you hear like a little shaker. And then he, the whistle comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha dog. <laughs> yeah, man. It's better than any intro in, in Creed. I, yeah. You know, I thought that... Um, Why don't they just use the John Cena music in the Creed movies every time? Well, you know, I've, I've noticed that hockey teams have started using wrestlers' entrances as their song when they score goals. Really? What's the best one they've used? I, I heard I, it might have been the Philadelphia Flyers when they score a goal. Now they play Becky Lynch's theme. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even sure I'm familiar with that one. I think it's the Stone good. Cold one would be great. Just the glass breaking. Bam, 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 bam. That would, would be good. Would you use just the the uh, the instrumental version or when they started getting vocals by the guy from Disturbed? I would I would opt for the vote for the uh, for the non vocals. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm down with the sickness, but clearly Logan isn't. <laughs> uh, so, cut to present. Oh, wait, at the convenience store. That's where we were. Um, we're at the start of the movie. Yeah. Creed gets into a... I feel like we should be done with this by now, and we haven't even started. <laughs> Creed, Creed should be, he gets into a fight with a guy, and... Uh, Jonathan Major's character is a gun. We learn a lot, like as the movie goes yeah, along, yeah, we see yeah, lots yeah, of flashbacks yeah. and stuff. Uh, but basically, I mean, Jonathan Major's character was in jail because this kid popped off at a fucking convenience store. Let's be honest here. That's why there's so much conflict between the two of them. I don't blame Jonathan Major's one bit. And then Michael B. wasn't even writing him in jail. That's the mom's. The mom never gave him the letter. She kept all the letters from him because she wanted like a better life 
for she, him. He didn't know he was writing to him. But oh, he right. could have been writing anyway. He could have gone he to feels visit once that. or twice. Yeah, that it's a, that's part of the conflict. It made me judge Adonis a little bit. Now when I watch those first two, I'm going to be like, you know what you should be doing instead of boxing right now is going to visit your <laughs> friend. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, he gets out of prison. Go And he's got a real chip on his shoulder, this guy. It's Jonathan Majors. He's the last black man in San Francisco. We all know him. Yeah. That's a great scene, the one where he's, like, leaning on his car. He's, like, immediately scary, right? Yeah. And and Creed doesn't even recognize him. He's like, get the fuck off my car. Yeah. The guy's joking. He, he said, like, he said like uh, hey, hey, you want to give me your autograph? He's like, I don't give autographs. And he's like, whoa. You know, he just he doesn't even recognize this guy. He did have, yeah. like, a hood on, though, right? Yeah, but so what, man? It, it, that guy should be living in your brain, the dude you sent to prison accidentally. You're absolutely right. So anyway. <laughs> but he's big time. But he gives him a chance to be a sparring partner with his uh, his pal from the first movie. I like that they brought back the dude from the first movie. Um, uh, what's his name? Chavez. That's the, that's the guy from the first movie? He's the dude. Oh, no, Pretty Ricky. That was the dude from the first movie. I was wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an Irish dude. He shows up in this, too. But anyway, he's training Chavez. They brought back Drago from 2. Yeah, that was fun, too. He got his hand broken. Yeah. Um. So this guy's new, Chavez? Chavez, I guess, is new, yeah. Okay. He's a real fighter. I looked him up. Oh, yeah? Look at you. Mm-hmm. I like this research. I just looked up the guy. I clicked on him. <laughs> is his mom a real boxer's mom? Yes. <laughs> You're just making that up. No, I'm not. Her name was Apollo. Her name was Apollo? Yes. That's a boy's name. And his brother is Adonis. It's also the name of a chocolate bar in Lost. Just so I can make another Lost reference. Okay. Um. Anyway, he's training Chavez. He's the new heavyweight champion of the world. Creed's retired. And... Now Jonathan Majors is sparring, but he's sparring too hard, and it's upsetting Wood Harris, a.k.a., um, you know, uh, Avon Barksdale from The Wire. <laughs> I thought you were going to say somebody from Lost, I swear to God. Oh, no. <laughs> were were they ever in episodes to together, this guy and uh, Michael Absolutely B. they were. That's cool. I, I never knew that. Yeah, they probably had scenes together. Was this guy in the in previous movies? In the previous Creed movie? Yeah, yeah, he was. I gotta watch, rewatch those. I don't really remember too, too much about them. Yeah. I remember I, them being real good, though. Yeah, they're great. Creed's my favorite Rocky movie. Yeah, me, probably me too. I've only seen a few of them, though. Yeah. But, uh, so basically it results in, uh, Chavez is gonna fight Drago. You know, Drago's son, uh, Victor Drago. Can I bring up something? I did some more research. Tell me. All right, so I, I looked up, because I noticed in the scene where they're at the party when uh, one of them gets their hand broken, mm-hmm. they show them both in a frame together. And I was like, there's no way these p- two people would actually be in a bo- boxing match together. I don't think. I don't know really much about boxing and all this stuff. But I looked it up. Drago, the guy from Creed Two, Ivan Drago, his kid, uh, he's 6'4", okay? Mm-hmm. Chavez is five foot 11 is a and is a welterweight which is yeah. in, in the weight class of 140 pounds to 147 pounds they keep saying though that he's the unified champion which i i think maybe he was a welterweight champion and then he fought the heavyweight champion now he has both okay and well, as i said i don't know much about it but it struck me that uh they were Quite different in size. That's been an issue with this fucking series from from day one. Okay, so that's I'm just sorry. alone in the first movie does not look like a fucking heavyweight boxer. You're right, but that's sort of baked into the whole thing. He's like a underdog thing. That's true. The other guy is the champion. Yeah. So anyway, Jonathan Majors pays to have Drago's hand broken, so now Chavez doesn't have an opponent. And by the way, right after this happened, whispered to my girlfriend. Jonathan Majors did that, right? To be to be honest, I didn't I didn't even really catch it. 
And then I talked to my brother and I was like, that was like kind of sudden. He was like, no, they showed it on the screen. I was like, oh, yeah, I thought I must have missed something. But yeah. So anyway, uh, so Jonathan Majors kicks Chavez's little butthole in like one round. Right. Mm -hmm. But he like he like he fights dirty. Right. And Michael B. Jordan's like not happy with him. I mean, he fights dirty, but not dirty enough to get disqualified. He throws a couple elbows here and there. Yeah, aren't you not supposed to do that? Yeah, you're not supposed to do that, but I think all's fair in love and boxing. All, right, all you love, have to do then. is not get disqualified, right? It's like in wrestling, you're not allowed to low blow, but say your manager's uh, distracting the ref, then you can. Right. Okay, I understand. Yeah. All right. I, I shouldn't compare real sports too much <laughs> to my pro wrestling love. Hey, that's why we know more. Yeah, I guess. Um, So then it's up to Creed. He's like, Jonathan Majors is now the heavyweight champion. My mom, Felicia Rashad, clued me in on the fact that he was friends with the guy that broke Drago's hand. Now I've got to come out of retirement on Stephen A. Smith's show and fight this man that was my childhood friend. That's the big confrontation. All right. Mm hmm. That's right. I thought it goes well. Yeah, I, I just think the movie, it's not as good as the first two. <laughs> but but I've got no beef with it. Like, it's a fun Rocky movie. It's a good addition to the franchise. I think the best thing about it is probably Jonathan Majors. I, that is a good foil for Creed. Yes, he is really good. I... I really like the fight at the end. I like. I feel like the training montage is really good in this one, right? Good training montage. All the come on, it's are... not like a classic like the first one when he's like. You Second know, one was good too. But the first one when he's going through Philadelphia and all those kids are following him around and shit on oh, yeah, motorcycles. That, that's and, good. You're that right. fucking rules. But this one, he like he like pulled a plane at one point. Yeah, that was pretty baller. That was so cool. <laughs> I like to pull a plane. I couldn't in a million years. Yeah, so why are you why are you dissing this pulling the plane? Well, I don't know if Michael B. Jordan actually did it or if it was done hey, with his beloved CGI. Come on. Um I didn't like the daughter that much in this one. Did I touch did. on that that much. I liked her when she fought the kid in school. I like the scene I, I I like the dynamic a lot between Michael B. Jordan and Tessa Thompson, where like she's a little more level headed and he get lets his temper come out. And I like when they finally get into like a fight halfway through the movie, which like the kid sees from far away. And it's like it's a it's a good representation, I think, of of relationship fights where he's not being terrible to her he's not being mean or shitty it's just sort of like he's turned off the charm you know there's no charm i don't have that in me right now yeah and yeah i i like that stuff but uh but th that's the thing i like them with the uh, the teacher in the deaf school it's interesting that she's fighting like as a kid and she's watching his fights on that ipad is it, that's interesting that now we're just going to follow the next creed? That's that's it, that interesting to you? Yeah, I'm saying one more creed movie and then Death Girl the movie. That's like that's like this is like Ray Skywalker being related to the Emperor Palpatine. Oh fuck off. I, <laughs> creed is related to fucking Apollo Creed. That's that's how this series goes. It's about legacy and generations. All right? So I I think like uh Rocky Wait, I don't know where I was going with that. What about that one moment where she was like on an iPad watching boxing highlights and then she saw one of them come in and she had to hide the iPad to be like, oh, I don't want him to watch, see that I'm in, so I'm into boxing. Yeah. You didn't like that? <laughs> no, that was pretty stupid. I thought it was fine. Yeah. Whatever. I'm, I'm fine I, I, with... I didn't hate this. I don't want to seem like I'm that down on anything. I'm not that down on it either. And I feel like I'm coming across negative as well, but... It's so no, I liked it. You want to hear my Rocky rankings? Yeah, please. Number one, Creed. Number two, Rocky. Number three, Creed 2. Number four, Rocky 2. Number five, Rocky 4. Number six, Creed 3. Number seven, Rocky 3. Number eight, Rocky Balboa. Number nine, Rocky 5. 
So which one? So five and six is like the low point. Yeah, but six is good. I'm telling you, Rocky is a, is a rare, consistent franchise. There's nine Rocky movies, and eight of them are good. Really? Well, yeah. What makes that last one so bad? Is there not a training montage at all? No, there's not even a boxing match. It what? Ends in a, I was it, just joking. It, it ends in a street fight. But is Rocky in it? Yeah. Okay. All right. And he does a street fight against who? It's fucking dumb. I don't remember. All right. <laughs> Some guy. All right, well, I can't wait to watch them all. Um, right? Oh, yeah. what, what do you, what do we give this? I give this one a three, and it, I've gone down a grade with each Creed movie. The first one I gave a five, the second one I gave a four. <laughs> now I'm at a three. Okay. Um, so by the time it's Deaf Girl the movie, that's gonna be a one. Well, according to you, I think they're doing that next. I don't. All right, we're gonna make a little a little wager. A little All wager right, on that. Um, I don't really know how to judge Rocky movies because I I've said I haven't seen a lot of them. I feel like I'm just like judging Buffy episodes as I go yeah. through them. We covered right. this with uh, with our old host Henry, so Logan was not forced to watch. The is he Rockies. a big fan? I'm sure. He oh is. yeah, of course. Yeah, Come of on. course. Yeah, is he more Rocky or Rambo? I'm surprised you guys didn't do Rambo together. Oh, we're both way more Rocky. That's why. Okay, um, well, we enjoyed doing Rambo together. Yeah, no, that was that was actually a really good time. Um, Built those tunnels. <laughs> I I'll go with three. Also, I liked it. I had a good time. Fought that drug cartel <laughs> to save this whatever. Yeah, All right, yeah, niece or whatever. Yeah, who's your MVP? My MV. You can only really go two of them. You can go Michael B. Jordan for acting and directing. He did a solid job. There was like that one shot I've seen on Twitter a whole bunch of like them on the two sides of the wall when it's like him. It's like but right before Jonathan Major's first fight and they like look at the wall and they like look at each other. I don't know. People are like, oh, this is so great. But That's I'll right. go with Jonathan Majors. I did like the scene after the, the match with them in the locker room together. Yeah, that was nice when they were like, um, hey, man passes the past uh we were just kids all that stuff yeah michael b and jonathan majors they're both powerhouse actors did you see what they said they said like we want to be pacino and de niro and and be in a bunch of movies together i did see that and i'm like bring it on i'll fucking watch all your shit but haven't pacino and de niro been in like four movies together but the, it, but people look forward to them. It's like, when are they going to do another one? That's why Righteous Kill was such a disappointing movie, because it was like De Niro and Pacino back again, but it sucked. Yeah, well, you should have said, like, Damon and Affleck or something. I don't even know how many they But Damon and Affleck haven't made a lot of movies together either, man. Yeah. Just like The Last Duel and Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> Damon and... Uh... And I guess Dogma. Yeah, I guess so. We want to be like Jay and Silent Bob. He's only in like one scene of that. But Jay and but, Silent Bob have been oh, in a lot of movies that, together. No, I would. No, how about this? Uh, mm, let me think about it. Who's a good acting team? Yeah, who is a good acting team? Colin and Brendan. <laughs> That's only a few. Who's Colin and Brendan? Gleason and. Oh yeah, that's true. They but that, but a that's only a few movies together. Yeah. They're also both in Harry Potter universe because uh, Brendan was in that first uh, Fantastic Beast, right? And Colin Farrell played Johnny Depp. That's what I said, right? Oh yeah, I guess because Co- Brendan was Mad Eye Moody. Oh yeah, Mad Eye Moody. I yeah, forgot I about that guy. <laughs> what do you mean? I think about him all the time. Do you? How often do you think about Mad Eye Moody? Uh, honestly, like at least once every three months. I remember when I first read Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, I pictured Willem Dafoe as Mad Eye Moody. Doesn't he first appear in uh, Goblet of Fire? Mm, he might. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Uh, so who's your LV? Oh, wait, by MVP, I don't even think I've said it yet. It's, it's majors. I think majors and Jordan are both powerhouses, but I'm going to give the edge to majors here. He really came across like a star and, uh, 
And I, I just think it was a good villain. You know, the, the best Rocky movies are the ones with the best villains. That's why Apollo Creed, uh, Ivan Drago. I think the reason Creed 2 is so good is because it's a Drago story. Yeah, and right. Tr- yeah. Um, but this guy's great. Diamond Dame. What was his Anderson. last name? And- Anderson. They yeah. could have done better than that. Diamond Dame Page, like Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> I would love it. Listen, if that was his name, I would I would have popped. DDP coming out. Yeah. He should have done a Diamond Cutter. Yeah, he should have. Hmm. All right. Um, the boxers not have finishers? They should. <laughs> they really should, right? <laughs> I think I'd be more, music I'd be more interested in boxing if they had finishers. <laughs> He's sure. on the ropes. Oh, my God. Creed's going for the 619. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff. All right. Uh, And my LVP, if I had to pick one. Hmm. You can't go with the deaf girl. Are you going to go with the deaf girl? I have three names written down, and they're all women. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm going to, you know who I'm going to go with? Felicia Rashad. That's mom? Yeah. Mama Creed. Yeah, I have... Deaf daughter written down, Amara. I have Tessa Thompson, Bianca. No! And then I have mom written down. I'm not going to go. It was you. I was just writing down the worst parts of the movie. Um, why was was deaf? Was the deaf daughter, the actor, actually deaf? Probably. I they, would assume. I, I think in this day and age, now. Logan, in woke culture, you don't, you, not hearing actors are no longer allowed to play deaf characters yeah that's right um all right i'll go with the mom also all right weird funeral scene right yeah that was kind of weird <laughs> what about that scene where uh kaylani was singing one oh, of Tessa Kaylani. thompson's songs that was odd yeah right that, that was and jonathan odd. majors like starts talking to her halfway through the song i, I like the balls kaylani on this guy. No, uh, Tessa Thompson. Oh, oh, in the middle like, of Kaylani's her performance. Her song is being performed right now by Kaylani. You shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, here's, he had to tell her all about uh, Leon. Leon, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, but anyway. Did we talk about that? How they got abused by their fucking foster? I thing? literally, because they weren't talking. Michael B. Jordan like refused to talk about it for a long time about like what happened in their. Uh, group home, and I really thought they were leading to he raped them. That's where you thought. Where That's you thought where my going. brain went, but he didn't. Like once they revealed that he just beat them, I was like, "Oh, well, that's not that bad." <laughs> All right, uh, but what happened? By the way, he, his mom is a, alive. Yeah, but he got in trouble, so he got sent to. A, also, didn't he not know Felicia Rashad until the first Creed movie? Am I remembering all of this wrong? I don't know. To be honest, maybe I should have rewatched Creed One and Creed Two before this. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I don't know that that I that kind of didn't make sense to me. I was like, why was he in a group home if his mom is alive right now? But yeah, I'm sure it makes. Maybe sense. Maybe I forgot if you, something. If you watch it in quick succession. <laughs>